Good afternoon, this is David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. And we thought that we'd come down today to the semi-primitive shelter and take a look around at how it went through the winter. Uh, we haven't been able to be out here for a variety of reasons. But we're going to do a little bit of work down here, probably eat some lunch and have a nice afternoon. Dew and I and Becca came down right now, and Tam and Rachel will be down in a little while. So we're going to get some video of this as we go through the day. But right now, let's go over and let's take a look at the shelter. All that I'm carrying today is a day pack and some water. Uh, this is my camera case, so I have a couple little things in there. But uh, it'll get us through the day, and we'll be fine. So let's go over and take a look at the shelter and see how it held up. All right, dew's inside the shelter, and you can see we lost a little bit of leaf debris that we're going to have to replace and fix up. But that's what semi-primitive is all about. It's taking care of it. How's it looking there, Dew? Looks pretty good. It's dry. Is it dry? Yeah. How's our stove holding up? It's holding up good. Stove looks good. There's a little bit of a corrosion or something here on the stove pipe, but that's okay. Nothing that can't be fixed very easily or replaced if needed. It doesn't look like it's going to inhibit it from working. And it really held up well where we put the stones out with the stove pipe running through. So that's a good sign. So what we're going to do is work on this for a bit. First thing I'm going to have Dew do is to come out and take the tarp off so that we can look at the top end of the shelter. He's going to pull this tarp down that we had strung up. What we had done was put leaves on top, then threw a tarp over the top of it. So we'll get that off and show you the shelter in a few minutes. Well, we've taken the top off, and you can see most of the leaf debris is still there because, of course, that tarp was on top. We're going to have to refill a little bit and fluff that up some. And uh, overall, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. So we're going to get working on it a little bit. Going to put some new leaf debris on there. And now we're going to see what it looks like. May get a front on that today too. Well, we thought we'd eat some lunch. And uh, because it's pretty windy out today, I didn't want to have just an open fire. So we put a small fire uh, just some rocks up here just to keep the wind from knocking this down. And uh, here's what you can see about the rocks around here. That's a piece of flint, boys. And uh, just to keep the fire out there, we gathered some different stuff to start our fire and thought we'd try out some old char cloth. Now I want to show you uh, this is not the new stuff we just made. This char cloth is about a year old. And we'll see what we can do here. I've just got a piece of obsidian and a uh, striker that a friend of mine sent me made out of an old file. So we'll take that and see if we can get a little bit of char going. And you can see those sparks landing on there, but that char is not taken. It's possible it got moist. It's possible it's just uh, older char. A lot of sparks, but they're not landing. So as a backup, I always carry a fire striker because I know that that char is going to light with a little bit hotter spark. So let's get some uh, let's get some grass together here. Okay, that's enough grass probably to get that started. And I want to do a fire lay for you real quick. I use when I want to build some quick coals, what's called an upside down fire. Uh, this has been put on YouTube before. I've been using it for about 12, 15 years. What you do is put a couple logs, or a couple sticks, since we're just doing a small fire here, in your fire like this, and then make like a platform. We'll make a platform across here. Then what we'll do is take, after we put that platform in, and lay a couple of sticks the other way again. Now what this is doing is you are getting air breathing in between those layers. So then I'll put my next layer, and this time again, I'll put an entire platform in here. But you can see these are smaller. And this fire is literally going to burn upside down, which is a, a pretty good way to get fast coals because all the other, all the other coals are going to drop down in there. Hi Beck, you hungry? 
put a couple here, lay another row across here, and again this is still small stuff. This is all very dry wood, you can see it just snaps and crumbles, so it's going to catch pretty fast. And we don't want this fire to get too big down here. We're on the edge of the, uh, on the, edge of the river, so it's not going to be a problem. So let me go ahead and get a couple small things on here now. Okay, and then we'll get this fire started. And there we caught that. But down here we don't have a lot of cedar, but we have some grasses. So you can see there's a lot of different ways that you can use char cloth. And we'll put that on top there. And then what we're going to do is put a few more of our smaller sticks on top, just in a, oh I don't know, teepee kind of shape. And that's just going to hold that on there. But this fire is pretty good now. We don't have to really do much else to this, except for stay out of the way. And again, we don't want this too big because it's pretty windy down here today. So we're going to let this burn for a few minutes and get back with you when we make our lunch. Well, our fire has been going now for about uh, four or five minutes. You can see that it's burned down. And do will get a shot here. We haven't actually put anything on this fire at all, but there's some pretty good coals in there. And uh, that fire is going pretty well for us now. You can see it's not been, uh, it's maybe not even been four minutes because this grass still isn't burnt. I'm going to put a couple things on top. The only reason I'm doing that is to keep that grass from blowing around in the wind. So we'll put those things on there and uh, begin to get our stuff out. Today I've bought my canteen with, and uh, inside my canteen is my military cook kit. And so we will uh, get that out and show you how we're going to cook lunch. All right, while we're down here, we're going to have some of Tam's soup today. And as I was walking, gathering some fuel for the fire, I came across some wild onions here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to dig down in here, try and get these things out by the root, so we can add them into our soup, and they'll be a real nice addition. These roots go down pretty far out here because we're at the uh, riverside, and it's all sand. I'm going to dig a little bit and get them out. All right, well we got the onions out, and uh, you know there's a law or a rule with onions. It smells like onions, and looks like onions, then it's onions. If either one of those ingredients are missing, if it doesn't smell like onions or look like onions, don't eat it. So let's take these back and get them cleaned up. Let's make some soup. All right, the soups that we're gonna make today, we make in pre-package. Uh, when Tam makes them, she puts the soup in there, puts the directions right on there, and it makes it real easy. But we don't need to worry about that right now. It already has a spice packet in it. What we're going to do is put about two cups of water into our canteen cooker. And we're going to go ahead and get that in the fire. Now this water doesn't actually have to be boiling, but uh, we want it pretty warm. So we're going to go ahead and leave that on. Dude's going to get his lunch in here. In the meantime, we've cleaned up the onions. We'll cut them up and split them between us and get them in our pots. Dude, looks like you're using the one pound coffee can for this. Yes, sir. You like that out in the field? Yeah, it works great. All right, our water's getting pretty hot. So what we're going to do is just cut these onions up a little bit and cut that piece off. Cut those up, put a couple into mine, and I'll just add to the flavor. As I said before, the, uh, the soups already have flavor packs in them, so that's fine. 
Now you can use the whole onion here uh, if you want to. You can use right up to the green part and uh, that's fine. We'll just put some onions in here because like I said we already have a flavor pack. And then we will take the rest and use them later on something else. And just let those go in the water for another minute or two. The water's pretty hot. It's to the, it's to the sizzling place. It's not quite boiling yet, but it's getting real close. Once that we've done that, we want to get our water off of there. So what I do is, this probably is not very hot because I didn't have it in the fire, but I always carry a, a bandana with me. And that way I can just take that off and just set it down. I'm going to set it in the sand here so it doesn't spill over. And what I'm going to do is take my soup. This is the flavor pack. But at first I'm going to just pour my soup into here. And this is enough for four cups. Since I only put two cups in there, I'm going to use about half of it. And that'll be fine. And likewise, use about half of the flavor pack. Kind of like pre-made bouillon, but it's uh, it's all homemade. So we got about half of that pack in there. Now I've just got my little microbites here from Gio, and what I'll do is I'll stir all that around for a few minutes, and then I'm going to go ahead and put it back onto the fire. All right. Well, that's pretty well done. We're going to have lunch now, so we'll get back to the shelter after lunch. You can see the dews is simmering pretty good there. Mine is, uh, is just, just about done perfect. So we're going to get these off the fire, and we're going to eat up. Lunchtime. All right, well, you can see we've been working on the shelter here after lunch. We've got many more leaves on it, and the Tam will go around the shelter here and get a good shot for you and show you the back side as well. You see we've reclosed that in. What we'll do now is we'll go ahead and we will put our uh, tarp back up on there, keep any moisture out. Tam, come on inside. You can see inside here we've closed up almost all the holes, so that's a good thing. We've put some covering over top of where the stove is. As much as we dare right now, we're going to try and find a couple pieces of bark to get over there. And uh, that will finish closing that in. Have our fireplace here. Put a raised bed right here. It looks like we're going to be good to go. Our storage places are good. We haven't had any uh, animals in here over the winter that we can see. So it's coming together. And we're going to keep you informed as we keep working on it. This is David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day. And we'll see you soon on another video. Thank you.